Happy Thursday, everyone. Got some Q and A action going down. Hope what's everyone's up, doing well. Cool. I'm gonna get the uh, I'm gonna get the IG on too. Actually, what up, Mark? How we doing, everyone? Sweet. So, everyone, ladies and gents, there's an obnoxious amount of early Black Friday sales going on for OA. Right? Garrett's favorite website has a sale going on. My favorite website has a sale going on. A bunch of other websites I like buying from have sales going on. I bought a thousand units yesterday. I'm gonna put on Big Booty Mix 14 after this, and I'm gonna buy some more. And life is good. So you guys got to make sure there's a shitload of opportunity to take advantage of right now, and we need to make sure we're squeezing it as much as possible. How's everyone feeling? We are in the thick of it. Flipping markets. What's up, Armand? What's up? Good Emmett. people of the internet. Gene, I appreciate that comment earlier on the uh, the video today. That was love. That was super love. When you're ordering large quantities from websites, how do you guys get around the max quantity of 10? Is it fine if I use the same? So it's going to be different, right? And so, for example, Miles and I used to uh, rip ungodly amounts of orders, but there was a specific cadence that we had to follow, right? Sometimes you have to wait for the order confirmation to come through. Sometimes you have to wait for Cole's, for example, right? You should probably wait for the Cole's cash email to come through. That's like 15 minutes and then the order again. Yep. Every site you'll kind of get used to and get comfortable with that cadence in order to kind of facilitate those orders getting through, right? Experience pays off uh, and just try a bunch of stuff. What if Amazon is on a, a, a pack of two? Uh, so it, you could just ungate that brand using the single pack listing if there is one, which would probably more be more effective, honestly. Ungated a Nike this morning, ready for these Black Friday sales. Yeah, so the nice thing, guys, is there's actually a ton of Black Friday sales going on, or, or sorry, early Black Friday sales going on right now, which is even better. So there's a ton of OA profit to be out there and uh, and get bought. On the way to post office, uh, that's a tweeter if it didn't happen. Dude, you know, uh, Aaron sold 100 FDM orders yesterday. Like, yeah, you said it was like 80 something, but yeah. Dude, uh, yeah, well, see, 100 units total, though, right? But yeah, it, isn't, that, isn't that absurd? Like, just from scratch, like, legit had never sold stuff 60 days ago. That is absolutely absurd. Any sites you recommend for right now for those early Black Friday sales? Um, If you have a burner email address, you'll be getting notified of a ton of them, but that's typically only, for the most part, only coaching students. So you, you, you just know Aaron has it in his blood. What's up, Deck Body? Well, yeah, he knows the lingo. Yeah, you're not willing to exist on the internet, like, from day one. You have the accountability to yourself. Forget to other people. You have the accountability uh, to make it happen. How can we save ourselves from deactivation? Don't break the rules. There's not any any abnormal deactivations going down. Does the FBA fee include shipping costs or that separate? So the nice thing is that within SellerAmp, you can add in an estimated FBA shipping cost to your back end in the profit calculator. So if you just go to selleramp.com, you can add an inbound shipping cost of 40 cents per pound. That's going to actually be overstated in many cases. When am I going to get ungate? I have to buy 10 units, but what if Amazon is a pack of two? So it's based on ASIN units. Yeah, but just do the single pack. Yeah, I, I just do the single pack. How about those rising storage trees? Yeah, if you're pumping stuff, and especially, you know, you guys should be doing a lot of FBM too, so you don't really have to worry about storage fees, honestly. How does the burner email work? So create a random Gmail address and then sign up for accounts on as many websites as possible so you'll get notified of stuff. Let's see some stream exclusive KPF sauce. Ooh. Okay. Um, so yeah, Garrett, you want to potentially show some stuff? I got to clean up my, my window here. <laughs> nah, deep into there. I hate doing FBM. Do you like commuting to a job? Cause you kind of only have one choice. Repeat the projected shipping costs and sound, please. Yes, Chris. So you can put in 40 cents per pound in, uh, in your seller amp estimated shipping cost. That'll do a good thing. How do you calculate revenue, profit, returns, bro, using seller board? What's better for you, FBA or FBM? This time of year, FBM is better because um, you're not going to have time for products to check in FBA. Yeah, for products out of stock, but you can list it. That's a fantastic idea. All right, let's hit it. Cool. Okay, sweet. So you want to hit the screen share, G-Body? Yeah. All right, cool. We got some exclusive sourcing stuff <laughs> here, ladies and gents. So one of the one of like the the best use cases for Keeper Product Finder is to really dive into a brand you've already proven, right? So in this case, right, let's start with Nike. That's going to be a kind of like our entry point, right? We've already proven that Nike works. We've already proven that Nike is successful. Now we want to dig into Nike and kind of maybe find like the nuances of 
the the kind of a nicks and crannies within that brand, right? So we have the brand here. There's 1.2 million products that are branded Nike on Amazon's catalog, right? But now there's a couple different ways we can approach it, right? And these are all well documented. These are all on Miles and Miles YouTube channels. One idea, right? And again, we're using the brand Nike to dig deeper. One idea, we can go down here and look for out of stock listings, right? So if we set a max of zero for the FBM and FBA, well, now we just solved for all Nike products that essentially have no sellers on them, but the Amazon listing exists, right? We've all come across like the variations that are blurred out, but we can't find the ASIN. These are cool products because the Amazon listing exists. There's history of the product, right? We, if we go to the find products, we can look through, scroll through pretty quickly, and we see that there's history within a lot of these different products, right? So these exist. You'd have to obviously have to go through one by one and reverse map them back to specific sites, right? That's one idea. And that alone leads to hours and hours of, of sourcing. Another idea, right, specifically now with Q4, a lot of things happening, maybe you want to look for products that are increasing in demand, right? Keep, keep a Product Finder does a pretty cool thing that allows us to kind of segment times, right? Sales rank times. So we have current 30 and 90 day. So what if we wanted to do, right, 90 days macro perspective, we wanted to find a product that was ranked 100,000 currently is ranked like maximum of 20,000. What does that solve for? It's a product that a couple months ago isn't necessarily moving that fast, but currently at this time period, currently it's moving pretty fast. And what does that result in? 4,000 products that again, if we span out three months ago, wasn't that interesting, 100,000 sales rank. But if we span in right to the micro time period, 20,000 in sales rank, right? So things are happening. We could also maybe establish maybe a specific price point but we're using a prep center and that sort of thing. One, one other thing we can do, right? Again, looking for areas that other sellers may be, maybe necessarily aren't taking advantage of. We can simply look for all suppressed buy boxes, right? And so if we turn off this out of stock buy box, we understand that a lot of newer sellers are probably scared away from products without a buy box, right? That's an advantage that we can use if we are comfortable with that sort of thing. Right. But we understand that we can't necessarily now use these sorts of filters or we can. Right. Maybe we want to do 50 right here. And so this case, this product, these products, these 23,000 products recently had a buy box, but it just got shut off. What does that tell us is that the price is probably maxed out and Amazon shut off the buy box because they thought the price was too high. So any situation like this, even if we set this at one. Right. What this is selling is every single product that had a buy box 30 days ago that currently does not have a buy box, the price is probably skied. The price is probably maxed out. And so this is a potentially another opportunity to dig deeper, right? Something else we can do. If we want to, um, oh, something else, right? And so if we kind of pivot a little bit, right? Clear our entire form. We are in November 9th. Right, so we're coming up on prime Thanksgiving time. Keeper Product Finder also gives us a cool filter that allows us to source the entire Amazon catalog text, the product titles. Right? Why is this valuable? So we have found two million products. That have serious been. sauce. Yeah, yeah, Black Friday or Thanksgiving, and then put the five seller minimum or ten seller minimum or three seller minimum. Correct. Um, I don't know where that is. It's down here. Uh, yeah, new offer count right there. Yeah, at the top. Yeah, right there. Yeah. But the other thing, right, and so we understand that a lot of Thanksgiving products haven't sufficient, haven't fully popped off yet. And so think of thinking, what's another way we can validate velocity without the capability to use sales rank? Because it's it's still early. Thanksgiving products probably aren't at you know the, the sales rank that we would expect. And so what's another way that we can validate that a product is moving super, super fast without having the capability to filter on sales rank? Right? It's with the reviews. And so the cool thing about reviews is that they're permanent. As Thanksgiving products year after year after year sell really well, they accumulate reviews and they don't go away. And so by using reviews as an accumulating factor, as a filter, we can filter out the lower, sl the slower moving Thanksgiving products without having, even having to use sales rank. And so if we just set 1,000 reviews as a minimum filter, well, now we're left with 72 products that have Thanksgiving in their product title. Um, that probably a lot of smart sellers are starting to hold and buy as we approach prime time Thanksgiving, right? 
we can even right and so this is this is kind of how this works right we go through a couple amazon's on a lot of them but we also see that sort of oscillation right that green line is sky is is really high march may july but it drops so these are the sorts of things that we're looking for right if we just click into this specific product i have no idea what it is right it's a dvd so probably not super interesting but just generally speaking this is the sort of seasonality that we'll expect right if we kind of dissect right here sales rank is high off season but as we approach in season sales rank drops offer count rises these are all normal things right buy box increases so a couple of things we can do is if we take for example the last year we can actually identify the sellers that were selling in this time frame right the hypothesis there being that if they're selling here in the prime time season they're probably pretty smart they're probably having other products that are related to thanksgiving but they're also probably having some other products that are just generally interesting all right, so if we go into data, go into buy box statistics. Oh, here we go, boys. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, filter, top to bottom. filter top to bottom. So now we can look at who sold this product at the most expensive price because these are the big brain smart people that are going to have a bunch of good leads for this year. And on top of that, right, we even can map back the years, right? So this is someone that was selling last year, right? Probably a wholesale seller. But if we can find someone, right, OA seller, OA seller, OA seller, we can find someone and not to say these are all aren't all interesting but if we can find a seller that was in stock maybe 10 months ago 11 months ago that have like a couple hundred in stock that's a guaranteed OA seller right that's a guaranteed someone who who purchased last year with the uh, intent to resell for that season but again they're probably joining other seasonal markets halloween thanksgiving easter christmas so many seasons to take advantage of and the the cruel cool thing is we can see all sorts of years of history of sellers that are joining markets at specific times. Yeah. I can go back at any particular time. I can see this specific time period and see that strawberry entertainment, right? Big wholesale seller, not super interesting, but another case may be sold at $90, right? Wouldn't it make sense to look into their store and look at just, just generally curious to see the other sorts of products depending on the fact that they may have other Thanksgiving products, other Halloween, Christmas, even just year round products. And so the, the whole theme of Kiba Product Finder is to source efficiently, right? Using it as a goggle, as a lens to look deeper into things that you already know exist, or look very strategically at specific markets, Thanksgiving, Halloween, I, right? These sorts of seasonal aspects that you can really, really pick apart in a, in a, a pretty surgical way. I got another one, clear it, clear it. I got another one for you. Okay, boom, clear. Zero to 50,000 rank. Right, and then Amazon out of stock here. Boom, right? And then you see over the 90-day drop percent top right on the sales rank, put 50 minimum there, 50 minimum. So now we're looking at stuff that is going up in demand. So it currently has a zero to 50K rank, but the, the sales rank is plummeting. So it means the demand is skyrocketing right here. And then go down and put Nike in. You can even do that with seven days, 30 days. Oh, right? you can... Yeah, but 90 days makes the most sense. Yeah, and then you go in and put 90. And now we're strictly going to be looking at Nike products that are, that are going up in demand, right? So we got 15,000 products that fit that bill, right? And then what you also want to do is see that 90-day drop percent, filter that top to bottom. So now we're only looking at products that are going up in demand. And... No, 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 that's, that's down. You got to do the negative though. Yeah, you got to do that. It's weird how that works. Keep one more. Yep. See now, now see how, see how, look at, look at the current uh, tab and then the 90 day average and you're seeing that all these prices are skyrocketing in these products. So these are exactly the type of stuff you want to look for. Yeah. And by the way, guys, you can move these all around, right? So make it as efficient as possible. Like for me, I like to compare the current buy box to the 90 day just to really have an indication of how stable specific markets are. Same thing with sales rank, current 90 day, right? So move these columns around to really make it as efficient as possible. And also this is something that uh, you can turn on, right? So as I hover over products, you can see on the bottom right, that's not a d default filter, right? So you have to go in, up here into settings uh, and essentially turn this on into like the, the add-ons or whatever, but turn that on so you can see a keeper graph. And again, it's all about qualifying quickly. The, quickly, the quicker I can go through a lot of these wasted products to find the good ones, the better off.
So these are prices that have these. So these are products. This specific search is products where the demand is going up at least 50%. So the sales ranks plummeting basically. And then we have this whole data set currently filtered to what's going up in price the most currently. So as you can see, trailing top to bottom, it's like we're in the 40s right now. So products have increased in the 40s. Now we're in the 30s. This is the amount they've price increase uh, comparing their current price to their 90 day uh, average, essentially, right? So it makes sense if something is up 40% compared to 90 day average is clearly going up in price. So there's uh, clearly a sign that it's there's a demand, there's a supply demand um, difference in the market. So it's a good opportunity for us as sellers. Yeah, last one, guys, before I wrap up, right? So typically, most times of the and year, we'll stay on stream too, by the way, guys, but just in terms of like the KPF sauce here, we're, um, we're, we're typically interested in buying in like more stable permanent markets, right? We're not interested in buying in for, and sending it to something FBA that's at a max capacity, mm -hmm. max kind of market. But with FBM Q4, we can be cool with buying into temporary markets, being into buying into max markets. What does that mean? This right? is so we can keep it, keep it, keep it, my bad. It's we can it. set like, and then price is arbitrary, right? So you have to ma mess around with the price, but we can set like a, a current price of, of a maximum of a minimum of 50, which means all these products are priced at 60, 70, 80, 90, whatever. And I can also set a maximum 90 day average price of call it like 20, 25. Right. And so essentially what this is doing, and again, couple it with Adidas, Nike, whatever your favorite brand is. But essentially what this is doing is finding markets where the, the price is maxed out, where the market, although probably temporary, is probably as high as it'll ever be. And because FBM is so powerful, because we're not buying into a permanent market, we can be cool with buying into these really maxed out temporary markets because we're FBM, because our turnaround time is going to be so quick. Um, and so oh these- gosh, That's unbelievable. That that And you can do percentages too, like the price has gone up X, Y, Z percent. Yeah. Guys, like uh, for everyone that's listening yeah. to this, the better you can get with Keep a Product Finder, the more money you'll make. And that's a direct correlation. Wait, wait one more time. Though. Go back down though on the buy box thing. Because guys, you can look only at products where the buy box has gone from 25 to 50 compared to its 90 average or buy box where the price has gone up 50% or more, right? You could you could do just zero to 50,000 rank or zero to 100,000 rank, whatever, and then do price increase to 30%. So what's stopping you? from doing zero to 10,000 sales rank, but then doing a 90 day drop of 30% or more. So you're going to get a small subset of data of items that sell incredibly quick, but the price is shooting up on. Yeah, the, the, the possibilities are endless with this sort of tool. The better you get with the filters, the more fluent you can really create the subset of data that you're looking for, the better off you are, right? It just creates a more surgical approach with how you're sourcing. Uh, and ultimately, it just makes you way, way, way more money. Yeah, so the demand increase was up in the top right. And uh, uh, so we're also, you're going to post that as a YouTube video too, Garrett, I assume? Yeah, oh, big time, big okay, time. Cool, all right, sweet. So th thanks for whoever asked that too. Um, that's fire. So yeah, that, that stuff's really, really helpful. How much faster your stuff selling Q4 compared to the rest of the year? Depends on the product, but significantly faster, like significantly, like um, the average item probably like two to three X faster, but it's also like it's selling for more. So you don't have to sell as many units, make the same money. You're also buying it cheaper. So stuff is more profitable. There's a bunch of things that go into it. Um, is it too late to send stuff in FBA? No, but you should definitely be testing stuff FBM. Like uh, it's definitely not too late to send an FBA, but if you can FBM it, you're losing money, not. FEM, I'm new to all this. What's the first step? So first steps are creating an Amazon Seller Central account. And then from there, you want to watch a bunch of YouTube videos as well as go to intro to amazon.com, which is a free document I have. It's really, really helpful. That's just intro to intro to amazon.com. That'll be pretty helpful for you. And then you want to get seller amp, get Keepa, and then you'll be good to go. Uh, no, nah, just submit the order confirmation. Do you try to stay even in Q4 sourcing right now? Yeah, exactly. Because this time of year, like volumes up so much across the board that some high sales rank stuff is still pop. It's like 125k rank is super cool this time of year. Filter to where the buy box price FBM for less stable price things. Facts. Do you have the replay from yesterday? Yeah. If you email the Amazon launchpad at gmail.com, that's the Amazon launchpad at gmail.com. Gotcha. Yeah, I got you, Mr. Brown. Yeah, you're in the right place, dude. Do you have a replay from yesterday? Oh, shoot. Yeah. Good call. I will yeah, upload yeah, it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should I send a pallet now or better to hold for FBM? Test it FBM, see what happens, but probably going to have to FBA it, honestly, if it's the type of products that go on a pallet. 
Uh, do you have a new updated list you recommend using? Yeah, so I posted that video at the end of September. So go watch that. If you search Foolish Miles on Gating, it's the one that's from the end of September. That'll be really helpful. All you guys watching this can get a gated in a uh, couple hundred brands today. No invoice needed for free. You say it was November 8th? Yeah. Uh, if the pictures look similar, you're probably good to go. Don't really worry about the title because sometimes some of the pictures or some of the names will be wrong too, like all the time. So just focus on focus on the other. Sometimes some of the names will be wrong, like all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The buy, yeah, buy box hates me. No, you're not just – are you in zero-day handling time? Are you using, Did you buy the shirt? Did you buy the hurt? The well, shirt? Exactly. Yeah, the shirt too. Um, do you, uh, is it products that other people are FBMing? Have you been through a December yet? You probably haven't. There's a bunch of stuff. Do you have a squish model on gate? Yeah. Any, uh, any big website, Kohl's, squishmodel.com, Walmart. Auto and gates. Um, so auto and gates, like start with like a pampered chef item and then storefront stock, the other low review sellers on those products. And you'll find a bunch of other auto and gates too. That helps or can you do it manually? Uh, no, so you, you have to do it one by one. What's the difference between the three different product boosting AI repricing settings? I, I don't really know that there's much. I think both of us go with a uh, the equalizer one, but AI realistically, AI. they all probably do a similar similar. So. Oh, they totally do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you'll be good to go with both. Again, though. the um, the value is is always going to be in the buying, right? Uh, a repricer is not going to fix a bad purchase, but it's going to maximize good ones, right? So you really have to really put the emphasis on on buying accurately. And the repricer is really just going to mimic the current buy box activity within the parameters that you set to, to maximize your products. Facts. Beyond frustrated with ungating, telling me not to submit an application and that they're closing it. Uh, so, Chad, they're just, first of all, uh, do name Chad should never struggle with ungating. You got this, man. Trust me. Uh, but, <laughs> but like, they just submit new info, dude, or, or hit up Amazon, Sar Help. Try it again. How many pages of Google Shopping do you look through when sourcing products to KPF? Not many pages at all, like typically just the stuff that initially shows. Uh, B kill is definitely better from someone who's used both. And if you need a B kill affiliate link, you let your boy know too. Best repricer when you have buy. Yes, yeah, so use use B kill. Um, if you go to B kill .com, it should come up. Actually, it might not. Either way, there, there's a link in the description for a repricer if you guys need. Which once you have ten plus ASINs, you are losing money not having a repricer, and so you should get that set up. Profit equalizer. No, no. So you always, you, you need to be updating your repricer all the time, especially when you're on big quantities and stuff, specifically the mins and maxes. That's all, all, for that's probably going to be honestly more important than the actual rule. I, I really just don't think there's much value in like deciphering which rule you're picking. All they're, all, all they're really doing is just following the buy box, right? If you're at 2550, the buy box drops to 2350, it's going to drop you to that price as long as it's within your min and your max. Yeah, if they're canceled, they don't automatically return to your inventory. You need to automatically relist it, it especially if you, if it, if it just auto cancels, like the customer's thing doesn't work, then it goes in. But if you cancel it, then you need to re-add it back. Uh, yeah, certain Adidas listings are just gated for whatever reason. You can't ungate them. You can hit up Amazon to see if it works, but it's just like. It also uh, may be uh, Adidas Originals as well. Facts. How do you judge your min price and when someone comes in and lowers, do you load if it's still very high or why? It depends how quickly you need that money back. If you can get more of that item long-term, because if you can get a ton of an item long-term, then you want to protect the price, right? Um, however, if you're not planning on replenishing, you can definitely be more aggressive. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Judge your min price though. It should be like as high as possible while still getting the buy box, assuming you can get a bunch of that item and you can be more aggressive if you don't plan on replenishing. So yeah, that, you you really want to try and encapsulate as much of that like price real estate as possible, right? So look in the buy box rotation, see where a lot of the percentages are going, and drop it as low as possible. But again, still being profitable, still buying abiding by your metrics, KPIs, whatever, um, that sort of thing. Cool, cool. That's what's up. What's up? Opinions on undercutting Amazon price? Only undercut Amazon price if you need to. You're gonna see in the buy box stats on seller amp whether or not other people are getting the buy box. So you're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, I don't, neither of us really know about the section three stuff. I, we didn't get hit with one, Miles didn't get hit with one. I think it's like a lot of beauty stuff. 
specific brand. I, I don't know. Yeah, so we have, a, we have a bunch of Kiva Prog Finder stuff in, in uh, my coaching program. That's like one of the main sourcing methods we use for that. And actually, if anyone's kind of on the fence in terms of joining my coaching program, like we, I'll, I'll super like do a discount for you right now just because like it's so important if you're going to do it, it makes the most sense to do it now just because it's so much easier for you to get results during December and such. So if you do want that, it's, uh, it's linked in the description if you do want to apply for that. Um, cause that's like, it's super important stuff, especially this time of year. If you're ever going to do it, it makes a lot of sense to do it now. Um, so you can just apply for that and link in the description. I can put you on a ton of uh, this time of year. If you're ever, oops, I can put you on a ton of Q4 sauce. See, uh, Pete's, <laughs> yeah, Pete's coaching guy. Yeah. So Pete, Pete's like a, a very good testimonial to that. Pete was like just getting started and then he did 120 K rev in August and he's going to do 250 plus in December, which should Not be around. Right. Okay, problem. The one above it. Strongest application for G Body's wedding was just submitted. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Wow. Cool. Cool. Okay. That's very good. And made a Discord now about to get to it. Yeah, Jules. And see, all Jules did was post a video on Twitter like twice. Like that's all he did. Like, and Dude, then I went back to that tweet. He got like eight thousand views and like fifteen exactly. people and, trying and to hit him up. He paid zero dollars for that. Yeah. Paid zero dollars for it. Crazy. Yep. And and he like literally any of you guys, if you just did that, if you just took a video and tagged a bunch of the boys, like be easy criteria for shipping templates, charge free shipping for X for normal and charge a lot for expedited, like 30 bucks, 40 bucks plus a dollar per pound. So we just use in terms of product research. If you're asking that question, you only need to be using seller amp and keep up for product research. Yeah, that is crazy engagement for someone just starting. But like, that's the thing. It's like no one puts themselves out there. So the few of us that do, right? Like we just get so much opportunity. If I yeah, sell he has like li literally eight people DMing him, asking him for uh, like to link yeah, up. It up or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And then like you, it's just a, it's a statistical probability that you will never be worse at this. The more good relationships with other sellers you have. Do you use tactical arbitrage? Nope. Just sell up and keep up for product research, dude. When the keeper shows the buy box around 75 last key four and the buy box is around 55 to 60 now, how would it go about raising buy box while catching sales? Yeah, super good question. So that's going to be come from adjusting your reprice or minimum up and then assuming that the, the market's performing that way too. Naturally, if the demand's going down, the price is probably going to go up, especially if other people aren't hopping onto it. How do you edit shipping costs for expedited shipping? Good question, Jesse. So if you go to the gear menu in the top right on Star Central, hit shipping centers, you'll be good. A peep the gold now are coming through, G-Body? That's heavy. <laughs> are you in your living room? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, keep a proc finder. So that method we were talking about last night, just go in on where it says sales rank at the top, put zero to 50,000 sales rank. And then all the way over on the right in the 90 day percent, put 50 as the minimum. So the one that's all the way to the right. Yeah. And then just Amazon ask stock and then like a brand or category. You'll be good to go. How many Asians should I try to source per day to go from zero to 10 K? Yeah. So, um, I mean, theoretically you could do that on one good ASIN in December, but it's probably going to be around, let's say you sell 10 of every item per month, which is, which is, that's incredibly low for this time of year. Um, 10 of every item per month and you buy 10 of each item uh, or 10 of every item, each item per month, your average sale price is 35 bucks. You got to source about, what's that? 30 different items pretty much. Yeah. I would mean, just go based on cost, right? If you want to sell 10,000, you'll have to spend about five, right? And so whatever that yeah. equates to uh, across all sorts of different products, right? Because every product is going to have a different amount that you can buy. So one product, you may be able to buy six, seven, 8,000, right? One product, you may only be able to buy 500. Uh, and so if you want to sell 10,000, you have to spend about five. And, and that's probably a, a good rule of thumb. Cool, cool. Sweet. All right, guys. So we'll be on for a couple more minutes. So any last questions you guys have, let us know. Do you sell wholesale? Nah, so neither of us do enough wholesale to, or I don't even do much wholesale at all. So no, our friend Corey Gannon, you got to follow him on Twitter. He's the guy for wholesale. LSG registration is necessary. No, it is not. And guys, too, a lot of you guys don't know, we have a podcast that has 140 plus episodes. So it's called the Buy Box Bandits. Um, so go check that out. It's on all podcast platforms. My bad, Crystal. Let me take a look. Get in climb the UN gutting. What, what should I do? Keep resubmitting with a different, like change up the information and also hit up Amazon. Sell our help on Twitter. Call Amazon. Reply to the emails. Make it make it as possible. What will the title is live be on YouTube? So it is live Amazon. Ask us anything with all out Amazon. 
See you guys Sunday. Appreciate it. Cool, cool, sweet. All right, guys. So yeah, if you need further help, um, I coaching program link is in the description. If you're on Instagram, you can shoot me a DM. Now is the time to do that if you're ever going to do it, just because it's so much easier for you to get results during December. So now is the perfect time to do that. Get to put you on a ton of game right there. Make sure you follow Garrett on the socials as well. And we'll see you in the next one.